Welcome to another episode of Unleash Your Unique Genius, whether you're joining us live on Turf Step Radio or here with us on Facebook. We're so glad that you're here. I'm your host, Angela Schroeder, and super excited to have Jimmy Tompkins with me as a guest this week. Welcome, Jimmy. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, I just got to be with you this last week. Uh, last weekend last few days we were just talking about it's a blur i'm like when was it how many days ago was it at the huge convention um and but tell the viewers i want you to just kind of in your own words tell our audience a little bit about you and your business absolutely no it was a uh, the huge was a blast a lot of a lot of great people a lot of fun times so we'll uh all I think are still on the recovery bus a little bit from a from a great event and uh, had a lot of fun. So that was that was awesome and great to hang out with you and everybody else. So um, yeah, I uh, Jimmy Tompkins um, and basically I've been in the service industry my whole life uh, since I was 14 years old uh, in the landscaping industry. Um, owned a landscaping company based here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and it's uh, taken me all the way through the lighting industry, um, which is where. Um, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun, uh, get to, uh, get to work with contractors every day with lights for decorators to help them grow their businesses and, and do all the things I've done as a small business owner and all the mistakes that I've made and all the successes that I've had and, uh, really get to work with them and, and, and have a lot of fun with the lighting, um, to grow their businesses and add profit centers and no pun intended, but let, let them see the light. Um, so it's, it's been, uh, a lot of fun. Uh, we're a distributor. We got locations in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, Sarasota, Florida, uh, as well as a, a partner uh, with Lights for Decorators of Georgia down in, in, in Atlanta. And um, we are just we're just bringing light all over um, and, um, you know, help, like I said, helping businesses be successful and setting them up, setting them up and, and, and having a lot of fun with it. So um, that's 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 me in a nutshell. Service industry all the way through. And uh, made made lots of good decisions and lots of bad decisions along the way, and it's it's fun to be able to share some of those uh, with with people to help them prevent, you know, help them be successful. Yeah, absolutely. I love when people do their intro, and I learn like a little tidbit or something of like, oh, I I just learned that too, or it's a reinforcement. <laughs> I forgot that about you. Um, but you do that, so we'll we'll talk about um, the sharing of knowledge but you do such a great job of that for business owners we have a, a lot of um our audience in you know various stages of their um business ownership whether it be home service business um or something else in in the lawn and landscape space at, at various stages but you do such a great job of like you said um sharing you've made mistakes you you've had things that worked you had things that don't and just so graciously, uh, you know, teaching and sharing and helping others come up as they do that. And, you know, you don't, you all don't have to make the same mistakes that we did. Learning and seeking out from other people is you can save yourself some of those mistakes. Um, we'll all make them, but you might as well make new ones and let other people that, you know, have, have paved the way, um, help you. So what's your favorite part or, um, stories of helping? What's my favorite part of business? Numbers. I love numbers. Um, and I love winning. I love a competition. Um, clearly if you've ever, I know Angela's seen me play cornhole and all the other yes. games, go karting <laughs> that we've done together. Right. It's, um, everything's a competition. I just want to win. Um, but you know, how do you win in business? Well, you win with numbers and, and success. And it's not all about the numbers, um, but it's it's attacking the goal, finding an opportunity, finding the challenge, and then seeing it, you know, addressing it, nip it in the butt and and, and going to win. So um, I love the opportunity. I love challenges and I, I love to, I love to win. I mean, bottom line. Uh, that hits home on something that I think a lot of entrepreneurs share is like we're achievement oriented um, and we um, chase the adrenaline. I talk a lot about that, that as entrepreneurs, we're often adrenaline chasers in many ways of our lives. And that's one of the reasons we started businesses is for like adrenaline chasing. We might like to do it in lots of areas of our life. Like you love to win in Cornwall. Um, <laughs> but knowing that about yourself, 
Um, some people don't know that and identify and own it. And you do and you celebrate it. You're like, I like to win. And I know I like to win. And you find ways to win. And a lot of times people don't like to look at numbers. We'll talk more about that because they think they're ugly and scary in business. But you need to identify if, if winning is something you need in your life. Like that's what lights you up. That's what makes you thrive. You've got to find ways in your business that you are winning and like identify those and figure out what the win is because there won't always be seasons of like the big sale um, or maybe you're no longer in the sales position, but like what does winning look like in your business and how can you identify areas and make them feel like a win? Because if you don't, um, you'll end up, adrenaline chasing in somewhere else and start like chasing rabbits um, and do bad things to your business to try and chase the win. Yeah. And I think, I think, you know, sometimes people set goals that are just so lofty and, and, and so up here it's, it's milestone wins too. You know, it's, it's hitting those, it's hitting those little milestones as you go and, and finding those little wins, those little successes. I mean, nothing gives me more satisfaction than striking something off a list that's on my desk you know and it's not just a little line it's like it's like jam it yes i got it it's done you know there's there, there's just winning is is a, a a huge general term and sometimes people winning is only money or winning is only times this but winning is winning winning at all levels and i think that's you know that's what's that's that's what's that's fun that creates that that natural progressions as well um of winning so um yeah, you know, I think it's setting the bar to a realistic expectation and then accomplishing that goal and then you're moving on to that next one. Having them roll up. Yeah. A realistic expectation, like goals that are attainable and something that feels like winning to you that isn't somebody else's goal. Um, it's not just a milestone like we're gonna do a million dollars this year. And JC just chimed in here said Jimmy Lights. <laughs> Jimmy's lights light him up. <laughs> I got a little glow, a little side glow going on here. <laughs> I like it. Now I feel like I want some more lights in my background on a regular basis. <laughs> hey, I know a guy. Um, I know a guy. JC will say, I'll call him out. Like he had a, a goal of a, you know, hitting a million dollars in lights. And that's just because a lot of times people set goals that are somebody else's goals. You think that like that's the next benchmark that I'm supposed to hit in business. And you maybe set a revenue goal and then you weren't really looking at your bottom line and you made less profit. Um, and so you ran yourself ragged and there is no more money to show for it at the end. And that sure doesn't feel like winning. No. And, and great point because there is, there's, there's, there's aspirational goals to hit a milestone like that. That's just, it makes me feel good. But does that define winning? And, and no, it doesn't because bottom line, even percentages sometimes are irrelevant. Well, I want to hit X a percent of margin. Well, your X percent of margin could yield a lot less dollars. I always say, you know, you put a dollar in the bank, you don't put a percentage in the bank. And and people get hell bent on just some of these, which to me are KPIs. They're not metrics of measuring your success. A KPI is a KPI. A metrics is a metrics. That's a measurement tool. So I think a lot of times KPIs are great, but sometimes people think KPIs are are actual truly numbers that are gearing and, and driving their business and they certainly can be but a lot of times these kpis are just really working towards goals and towards budgets you know conversion rates and amount of leads inbound and you know it doesn't matter if i'm getting 100 leads and generating five sales i'd rather get 10 leads and five sales so you know having numbers that 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 correspond and have direct impact to your bottom line everything's got to go back to bottom line i don't care what your top line is let's talk about your bottom line and how can we get that bottom line just one percent of bottom line two percent of bottom line can have a significant impact in, in the trajectory of a company so totally agree top line is unfortunately we hear a lot in the service business you know i hit i hit seven figures but that same guy that just hit seven figures two months down the road is like man I, I don't know what's going on i've got no money i don't have any ability to market myself i hit my goal but now i'm cash broke so mm -hmm. you know people will go go for broke to hit that goal and not really think about their pocket they just assume it's going to be there so knowing your numbers is a big big thing and i know angela you've heard me pre 
go to town on this. But uh, you got to know your burn. You got to know your costs. You got to know what it costs to open your doors every single day. And if you don't know that number, you got to hit the pause button, figure that out, and then move forward. Yes, I have heard you talk about it. And I loved your talk on that because mostly I hear you talk about lights and um, lights are all fun and glamorous. And like JC says, light you up. Um, and you help a lot of people training them in lights and with another tool and an avenue to, um, you know, latch onto their business to, to make a lot of income and you're, you know, incredible at helping people do that through your business. But I hadn't heard you teach on numbers and you have, you had a great way of doing that of like, guys, you know, you have to take a step back. Um, it's not all, like we say, rainbows and butterflies or sparklers and <laughs> um, light up things that it's it's so important. And so many people are scared of it. Um, they don't want to look at it. They Numbers isn't their strength. And so sometimes they don't understand it and they feel stupid. Or when money is tight, when you are in the grind stages of your business, I and I've been there, um, I think, because I don't like to look at my numbers. <laughs> um, I know the importance and I help people knowing the importance of the number. I mean, in lots of coaching and consulting from the very beginning, I help people know exactly what you're talking about. But in my own businesses, I um, I don't love to look at them. But they think that by not looking at them, it's somehow going to go away. Like if I don't have to look at this number in my bank account, something's going to go away. and. Sure. It's never going to go away, people. It's going to get worse. Um, it gets better. If you, you get want that it. number in your bank account to multiply, it is so much not just about chasing the win of sale and going back to the win. People think, and sales fixes a lot of things, but it doesn't fix everything. And so much of what actually goes in your bank account isn't the number of sales you're closing. It's knowing your numbers. Yep, 100%. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that completely. And I think, you know, I mean, you might not get into your numbers, but I can guarantee you, you know what your operational costs are. And, you know, once you know that, you understand if I'm a landscaper and I lose a day of production and I'm budgeting X amount of days per year to recover my overheads, that money's gone. If my operating cost to open my doors a day is 500 bucks, which honestly is probably very low for a lot of companies. But that's $500 that I then have to go make back on another day. So when you develop budgets, you know, how many days are you going to budget to recover that overhead? You're not budgeting 265 days. You're not budgeting 300. You're not. You're budgeting around 210 to 220 days because you're going to schedule the rain days, the holidays. Mm -hmm. And if you know that, you really quickly say, like, shoot, we lost a day, a rain day, hurricane came through. We lost three days. That's $1,500 of recovery. That's essentially gone. So I think that's, you know, I, I guarantee you, you know, those numbers and you're not drilling into them every day because you don't enjoy it, but at least you know what your recoveries are and what you got to do to be successful. Um, and if people don't, that's, that's right there is where people get caught up. The cost of opening the doors is typically in a landscaping service-based industry, landscaping, pressure washing, things of that nature. You're typically anywhere between 25 and 35%. Um, mm -hmm. That means 25 cents to 35 cents of every dollar you invoice is basically blowing out the window on the way back to the shop. That money is not money to be spent. That money is to keep your doors open. So um, very, very important to, 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 to lock in on those, those numbers. And if you don't, I mean, I, I make fun of myself, but um, because I'm not the one that likes to look at it, I put systems in place so that I have to, you know, so that I have someone <laughs> who is looking at them and, and uh, shoving my face in it to to make me look at it. And if you don't know what you're doing, I mean, find a mentor. Like that's one of the biggest things a mentor can help you with. And then if that's not your strong suit or you know that you are avoiding it, um, then you have to set up a system in your business. You have to set up somebody that is, somebody that is defending your PL um, in your business and going over it with it, you with it on a regular basis so that you can defend the back end, not just grow the top end. Yep. Totally agree. All totally right. Agree. We're going to take, um, we have to take our, I knew this was going to go fast and like get the alert, take the first commercial break. Um, and then we'll come back and talk some more about lights and winning. Awesome. Creating 
Lighting Art from Darkness. For over 20 years, Cast Lighting has designed and manufactured the world's most durable, energy efficient, and technically advanced landscape lighting products available at astonishingly affordable prices. Cast offers an all encompassing line of products with everything you need to get the job done. Cast Landscape, their most durable product, is best in class, low voltage landscape lighting made of solid bronze with integrated and drop in LED technology. These fixtures are built to endure the most demanding environments. Source Lighting, a new division by Cast is your source for professional grand landscape lighting made of durable brass, offering both integrated and drop-in LED technology and backed by CAST, the world's most durable outdoor lighting. CAST Lighting gives you innovative, state-of-the-art, old-world craftsmanship with tomorrow's technology. Visit their website at cast-lighting.com today. That's cast-lighting.com. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world, no one rocks like Turfs Up Radio. Turfs Up Radio, your industry, your station. Get ready to abandon gas with Crest Commercial. With insane power and extreme longevity, the era of batteries trailing behind gas engines is over. With the Crest revolutionary 8-minute cyber system, Crest Commercial landscape tools provide the same power and performance as their gas-powered counterparts, as much as a two-stroke engine. Plus, the Crest 60-volt CyberPak batteries charge in 8 minutes or less. Professional landscapers can finally make the switch to battery without sound sacrificing performance, power, or runtime. Cress, it's the only choice to replace gas. For more information or to find a dealer near you, visit Cress.com. Having issues with your maintenance schedule? Want better routing and ability to track your vehicles when they leave the shop? Do you want to reduce your liability exposure with your vehicles that are moving billboards on the road? GPS Fleet Consulting uses cloud-based dash cam monitoring and can easily track your vehicle maintenance using real odometer readings. GPS Fleet Consulting can also assist you with live phone support and email support with guaranteed same-day responses. Yes, same-day responses. Stop wondering where your trucks are and start managing your fleet with GPS Fleet Management Systems. For more information, visit gpsfleetconsulting.com. That's gpsfleetconsulting.com. All right, and we're back. And that's enough about numbers. No more numbers? Dag on. The light numbers. <laughs> oh, just kidding. And and not. Um, <laughs> I, I do think you, know, you brought up a good like, point. Uh, and- about winning. Um, cause that was a great way to kick it off. And you said you get winning out of, I think we have a lot of personality traits the same, but like crossing things off a to-do list is winning too. Me very much so. Have you ever taken that um, Gallup Strength Finder? I've not. I'm going to send it to you. Yeah, do it. I, I, I'm not like crazy about all kinds of personality tests, but I am from Omaha where Gallup is, and I love the Gallup strengths. And my top Gallup strength is maximizer. Achievement is right up there too. But one of the things about a maximizer is turning good things to great, um, like, how do I look at something, everything in my life and turn good to great and help other people do that? And that, like, we thrive off of, have to have, feed off of, like, how much we get done in a day. And so, like, winning, you can, like, creating those micro wins in your life. Like, a to-do list. Like, if you're a maximizer and you don't have a to-do list so that you can have the win of crossing those off, you are just cheating yourself out of that adrenaline. I can guarantee you that I am probably off the charts on that one. Yes, I, you know, be better tomorrow than you are today, all these little cliche cliche sayings. That is 100% me balling up that ball, throwing the trash can when everything on is done. Yes, I'm, I'm never content. I always want to be doing something better. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's... There's always room for improvement is probably the first thing that comes to my head every single time. So I definitely think I'll be off the charts on that one. I'll do it. I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to send it. And those of you out there, um, if you haven't taken it, I highly recommend it. Um, the more ways that you know yourself and, you know, you can figure out how to be the best version of yourself. Um, it's, 
That's great. And like I said, uh, far too many people don't identify that need to win. Like I, like, you know, yourself, you know, what gives you the adrenaline, what puts you on fire. And that's one of the things like, that's your unique genius. Like you've identified it, you, you know it. And one of the things people get frustrated with in their business is they just don't know themselves. And so they're chasing squirrels or they're going down the wrong things because they, they aren't operating in what lights them up. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there's a lot of times in business that is not winning. That's a struggle, but you have to create some sort of, of win um, and things that light you up or you're going to burn out. Agreed. And I think you kind of touched on it before that break, but I mean, business owners are typically ops guys or production minded people and working to your strengths and working to your weaknesses. I think it's something a lot of business owners struggle with is they want to try to do it all, but they're really good at ops or really good at production or really good at sales. And very rarely are they good at both. And at that point, they're just kind of kind of holding that company back from from excelling because they're just not willing to delegate or give up a responsibility that they think they're really good at. But when they really take a step back and look at themselves, they're like, you know, I'm really just not a great sales guy or, you know, I really don't want to be on a ladder. Or I don't really care. I just want to see the result, not the process. So I think I think you nailed on that and, and understanding who you are and, and what your strengths are and why you are a business owner and do that and find somebody to, to whether it's numbers or whether it's sales or whether it's ops, you know, really having somebody that can supplement that. That's that what can, can yield a really great culture. And it's not knowing, just like we said, for goals, it's not the same for every person. Like what right. your strengths are, are unique to you. Like you like numbers. You didn't need somebody to help you with numbers probably as, as one of the first things to offload. So knowing that, you know, if just like you said, if you like operations, if you love sales, don't take yourself out of the role. Um, you know, don't listen to what somebody else says your first hire should be um, just because every other business owner is doing it. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Um, so lights. Let's talk some lights. Now we talked some winning. Um, what is one of the your favorite things about like bringing bringing lights to business owners, teaching them? Um, I mean, I've gotten to be at your trainings and um, in Raleigh, and you know, this is such a great add on for businesses. Some people that aren't doing it at all, or the new things coming to market. Um, that are making a really big difference for business owners. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, light. I mean, I could obviously sit here and talk hours on lights. Love it. It's fun. Um, it's a blast. I mean, it, I think what what really draws people to lights is it's a different change and grind. And it is a when, when you're when you're doing it, you are bringing the joy on people's faces is is just amazing. You know, you're bringing happiness to the community or you know the homeowner or there's so many guys, including JC, that have done a phenomenal job of taking breast cancer patients or children with cancer and, and literally lighting up their communities and, and embracing their communities. And, you know, that's the emotional side of the lights, right? There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of happy customers. There's a double edged sword there, you know, because people are paying a premium for a short window of Christmas lights, for instance. And if you get it wrong, you know, that, that could really be a domino effect for you. But if you get it right, you could just knock it out of the park. Um, and I think, you know, obviously I was a landscaper at heart. Um, that's what I've done, you know, done since I was 14, love landscaping, love the industry, love everything about it. Um, and, and we got in the lighting business to supplement, you know, our, our, our revenue so that we could afford to keep all of our staff year round. Uh, we did not get into it to be a profit center and this goes back to 2002. So I've been doing this for 22 years. Um, and it was. It was just a way of keeping our guys because even back in 2002, em employee retention was crucial. You would lose some really key people, and then next next you know March come around, you're like, wow, we're still five people short. And then the hiring firing process, you know, of, of trying to find the right winners, and that just cost a lot of money. So you know, I think I think lighting it's got the emotional, but it's also got the ability to to change the dynamic of your company. It can fill a gap of a lot of short slower seasons for contractors. Um, and then it has a potential to be a really high margin business if it's done properly. Um, so I think that's 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 huge, um, filling the gap. But what a lot of people I mean, is kind of a kind of a understated 
is people then who wouldn't maybe hire you for your landscaping or your pressure washing or whatever that service that your core business is next thing you know they wow this company is phenomenal they got great service they're nice people i really like them you know what, let's just go ahead and switch our landscaping to them and and that's something to me that is this huge and the next thing you know you're not just talking to this customer once at christmas you're talking to them all the way throughout the year then they become a you know they become a salesperson for you i love these guys they're amazing their service is top notch they're on top of everything they start talking to their neighbors and your business blows up so i think i think what what lighting can do for your business is huge and you know the popular thing here lately has been to get christmas lighting over the last four to five years the amount of contractors that have jumped in the christmas industry has, has absolutely blown up and led is a big part of that before it was led you actually had to do a lot of math and figure out how you're going to get power now that it's led it's 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 very very easy very easy point of entry to get into the business um, but landscape lighting is another phenomenal avenue um, that brings beauty year-round beauty to to people's homes that you can sell service contracts you can get that residual income um, permanent lighting obviously huge um, you know we launched omni very excited about it um, it's it's definitely taken off it's it's um, been a wild ride uh, over the last eight months with omni and having a ton of fun with it um, and, and I think what we're seeing that with people's businesses is it's just it's there again it's opening up doors and it's knocking down barriers and it's it's really allowing them to take their business to the next level so um, I think that the cool thing with lighting is why I got into it is why everybody gets in, gets into it it's a way of boosting your bottom line and that could be through retaining employees it could be bringing a higher margin sector to the company there's lots of different ways that it's going to boost you and and what we're now seeing is guys like i want to get out of pressure washing i just want to do lights so teach me everything lights um and i think that's great but at the end of the day that core business got them there so maybe scale that back find a good happy medium because lighting is a is a luxury service you know not everybody needs lights not everybody wants christmas lights not everybody can afford landscape lights um, but having a good, well-rounded because they give and take. And I think that's something that can really add, add value to people's bottom line and, um, stick with that core though. Don't, don't bail on it too early, um, because that's what got you that point. And, and I think that's, um, what I've seen and what I really love about the lighting industry. And, and there again, the emotional side of it, who doesn't like to drive around and look at Christmas lights or look at a well-lit property with landscape lighting or, you know, see the permanent lighting running around the building. It it is it is it it puts smiles on your face. And if it doesn't, then don't get into lighting. <laughs> so <laughs> it does literally light you up. It um, lights you up. <laughs> but it is so much more fun. Lights people up, smiles on faces. Um it, it is like all the cliche things, pun intended, like it's the shiny object um that is a lot of fun. People can, you know get in the other i know i talk to lots of of our clients and they're maybe sick of the service that they're doing they've been in it for years you know whether it be washing or cutting grass or whatever that's lost it the eyes have all kinds of words it's lost its sparkle um but it has and it's not as as fun for them um so lighting can be that emotional one it just adds that you know pizzazz the energy, the excitement back for you of, of something new. And at the very least, like you said, is is just this belt on complement to um, make your business not seasonal anymore. Mm -hmm. If you have um, a gap in seasonal business to keep those employees, keep some income going, um, and I think people go go into it for that. But then, like you said, then it explodes and it's the thing that's a lot of fun. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I and, and, and then it becomes the reverse that you said what's so important. Like, don't forget, even if this is your new thing that that you love in your business and in lights, then your primary service can go to like, OK, this is what's getting me back to, to lighting season. but you have an opportunity for, you know, to maximize those customer relationships, client relationships, and provide them more than one service. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, people always say, well, how do I get into Christmas lights? Or, you know, how can, how do I get into it? Well, take your existing customer database and launch it. 
And you'd be amazed at what you get out of that. So those core people are the ones that got you into lighting. So don't dump them on the backside because they're going to sit there and they're going to continue to buy everything you serve, sell them because they love your service and they love who you are. At the end of the day, service is service. So everything's going to lose that shiny appeal at some point because service is a grind. And that's where you have good strength and systems and good people that, that can take some of that burden off of, of the business owner. Yeah. We're going to, uh, already time for our second Christmas or our second Christmas, second Christmas. <laughs> commercial break. Um, and then we'll be back and talk more light. Awesome. Have you considered artificial turf? It's great for areas with high precipitation, which means no mud after a heavy rain and no more mowing wet grass. Today's artificial turf is made using recycled materials and helps to reduce water consumption in areas of drought. Turf Envy's artificial turf is constructed of quality raw materials, safe for pets, humans, and our environment. With decades of experience, our staff can help with support, training, and product education to give you confidence when estimating a project for a potential customer. Learn more at TurfNVUSA.com today. You're listening to Turf's Up Radio, the only radio station of its kind dedicated to the green industry. Turf's Up Radio, your industry, your station. Hey everybody, Wayne Vos, the Prophet, your host of Profit Time here on Turfs Up Radio. If you listen to my show, you know I'm all about profit. As an industry, profit is something we fail to meet most of the time. If you're working hard but not seeing the results that you deserve, Profits Unlimited is here to help. We offer processes and systems designed specifically to make your company more successful, more profitable, and certainly more efficient. When you're ready to take your company to the next level, reach out to me at Profits Are us.com that's profits a r e u s.com and don't forget to turn into profit time ever monday wednesday and friday at 10 a.m are you a military family with a spouse on deployment away from home did you know that nonprofit project evergreen has thousands of volunteers across the country ready to help military families with lawn landscape and snow removal services we call it green care and snow care for troops if you are a military family and would like to receive this free service, or if you'd like to volunteer to help, visit projectevergreen.org. Project Evergreen, creating a greener, healthier, cooler earth, one yard at a time. Busy work burning you out? Kick it to the curb and do more of what you love. How? With Landscape Management Network to spend less time creating estimates, tracking crews, doing job costing, managing invoices and payroll, and more. FYI, the average LMN contractor spends 50% less time doing payroll, increases profits, and lands more jobs. Put an end to burnout. Visit golmn.com slash turfsup. That's golmn.com forward slash turfsup to get started. Welcome back to our final segment. So you talked about how, you know, people ask, like, how hard is it? Or maybe I just had this in my head. When people want to get into holiday lighting or add holiday lighting, landscape lighting, permanent lighting. And you did say, and um, when our clients ask this, like, you already have foundations in place, right? You are, If you are in the service industry, um, you're doing washing or um, lawn and landscape. You have a client base. So you're not starting from scratch of, of just throwing spaghetti out there marketing. Like you have people who already love you, um, know, like, and trust and are doing business with you. And most likely you have the structure in place of your business. Like you have a CRM in place. You have um, operations systems in place. You have a team in place. So you have a lot of the hard part of, um, you know, done from scratch already there. Um, what is their next step if somebody's interested in adding lighting to their business? Well, they got to find a good, good local source um, to be the provider that can be their mentor and to help them. You know, to me, that's what we at Lights for Decorators do really well 
is we, we bring them in, you know, we teach them to show them the ropes. You know, there's lots of great organizations out there that train um, the industry. <clears throat> some people charge, some people don't. Um, and just really find an organization that you can fit in and that you have a good relationship with that that's going to have your back to provide you not only product, but the support as you learn. And I think, you know, there again, that's why I think something that we do extremely well. Um, all of our trainings are always free. We just want to bring people in and, you know, we look at it as we're going to win together as they win. We're going to win. We're going to have that relationship. And, and we don't care about the $1,500 or $2,000 to train. You know, that's our investing in them to help them get to the next level. So I think having a really good relationship with that supplier, and there's a lot of great suppliers throughout the country. Um, and, 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 you know, we're, we're lucky enough to have really good friendships with a lot of these guys. So I think having that relationship with someone that's more local, more regional or, 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 or whatever that you find that comfort and then rely on them. You know, you don't have to get in the Christmas. And if you look at our catalogs, like, you know, for instance, these are our catalogs of all the lighting materials that we provide. I mean, it's hundreds of pages and it's overwhelming. So you don't have to get into it and, 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 and try to offer everything. Christmas lights, you can literally get in it with, with offering about eight products. And that's going to cover 90% of what you need. So don't have to be intimidated by, you know, what is all these different items or how do I use them? No, you pretty much wreaths, garland, C9s, five millimeter light sets are pretty much going to be your core. There's different applications of those elements, but that's really it. And then you're going to have some, you know, little zip cord and males and female plugs and things like that. But um, it's really simple. So don't overcomplicate it. Don't try to get in and just offer everything out of the gate and don't bite off one you can chew. You know, take that first year to just literally market to your existing clients, pick up 20, 30, 40, get your feet in it, understand your systems, your processes, and then leverage those 20, 30, 40 accounts the next year for marketing. Go to them and ask for referrals and go up for them and have that grow exponentially and then figure out your marketing campaign. Um, you know, because what if what if somebody markets and they hit so much and then they bite off more they can chew? And they're a little bit slower than they think they should be. And then they're letting people down. So right out of the gate, they're, they're, they're not delivering that experience or that, that, ex, that, that service that is, is essential with Christmas lighting because it is a very tight window. So I think having a great relationship with the vendors big um, that can support them and train them. And like I said, there are other people, other organizations that just provide training and, and they do a fantastic job um, of that. So maybe that's a better opportunity, a better fit uh, based on, geographically where, where contractors are located. Um, and I think just there again, you know, relying on, I always tell people we're here, use this and abuse us. That is what we're here to do. Call us, bother us. We don't care. We're going to help you. We're going to make sure you're successful with it. And um, I think you got to have people like that. And maybe it's not a vendor. Maybe it's a, a contractor in the same market that you're friends with. Um, you know, this is one industry It's competitive, but there's only but so much you can get done. And a lot of time having those strategic relationships with other contractors can make sure the jobs are going to the right people and that you're not getting the jobs to the undercutters or the people that are just really coming in there and, and undercutting that market. So developing good relationships with other contractors, I think, is another uh, thing that enough people don't do enough of that. Um, and they need to bridge that gap. And they're not competitors. They're, they're, building, yeah. they're building value in the service that they're providing together. And I think that's really important. Um, but aside from that, I think, I think, you know, it's, it's don't buy a bunch of products. You don't know if you're going to sell it. So there again, good vendor relationship, you know, make sure that they can provide you that product quickly and efficiently. Um, don't overcommit yourself on product. Don't overcommit yourself on jobs. Um, and bigger, not always better with the size of the jobs. You know, sometimes you can get in and get out on the smaller ones a lot quicker than some of these big, large estates um, or even commercial properties. So just really have a good target mind of what, what services, you want to offer and, and, and in what discipline. Mm. So many good uh, nuggets in there. I'm going to kind of go backwards in, yes, in the service industry, not just lights. Um, you know, some people look at their competitors and are, uh, think of it as that's my competitor instead of a collaboration of what you guys can learn from each other. And uh some of our great friends, JC and I have great friends in the market that do uh, lighting and washing. And they can, there's great collaborations. There's more than enough business for everyone. And you can learn so much from each other. And like you said, make sure that, um, you know, when you have those relationships and, and friends in the market, so much can come out of that. 
But going back to what you said very first, I love your philosophy and it shines through in everything that you guys do of let's win together. And that goes full circle in all of our conversations about winning. But you know that in all you're doing, like that's your intention. You can see that. And when you go into a vendor relationship with someone, contractors, and you know, like in any vendor, when they are like, I want to be your partner. And like, how can we create winning together? That just says it all. And and what you do shines through in that. Like, um, we don't want you to just buy products. We want you to know how to use it and, and use it correctly. And um, of all the things you do, if you want to get into lights, you guys are a great resource and make sure that you get a resource, get a great vendor partner and not like you said, just go buy some lights and um, think it's like hanging your own Christmas lights. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, there, there's there's distributors. And, and there again, I take a service mentality to everything that we do. We And I, I'm a service guy first. So we take that service mind to distribution. And I think, you know, being on the other side of that for so many years, you're just a dollar sign. You were just another person on somebody's list to say, oh, this person's up or down. Hey, you know, Jimmy, why are you guys not buying as much from us right now? It wasn't anything of, you know, how's business, what we could do better for you. The first question was, why are you guys not buying so much product from us? Have you taken your business elsewhere? You know, and like, that's just the wrong, the wrong approach, you know? Mm -hmm. And and I think there's a lot of, especially in the landscape industry, you know, that's, that's being bought up by one company every day. You know, you were losing those relationships with the vendor. And I always used to, I actually always was on the other side like, how can I take care of my vendor? How can we pay them faster? How can we make sure because when I am in a pinch, what can I do to make sure that they're going to go to bat first and help us? I don't want to be that nagging customer who's, you know, who's just that guy. So, you know, treated them almost as a service. So I think that vendor vendor contract relationship is, is essential. And when you got a great rep at a company, you stick with that guy no matter where they're at. Yeah. Well, as we finish up, um, you have some events. You're going to be a world traveler here coming up. Um, like I said, I've been to, been to one of your events. Missed a really good one. FOMO for that. But you are going to be traveling all over. Yes, we are. We, um, we're doing a lot with Omni right now. Omni and Christmas, obviously, is that time of the year. Our landscape light trainings will kick back off at the beginning of next year. Um, we do a lot with Dower and a lot with Lumion. Love the relationship and, and love their passion for training and developing people as well. Uh, that's why we distribute with them. But uh, yeah, so we've got a lot of Omni permanent trainings coming up uh, over the next six weeks, seven weeks uh, from Dallas to Atlanta, to Raleigh, uh, to Salt Lake City, to New York um, are all different locations where we're going to get people certified to be able to install Omni. Um, as I said before, everything's free. We don't charge for these trainings. We don't charge for these events. Um, so if you're interested in permanent lighting, that's a great way of getting yourself into it. And I've been telling people, if you're in the Christmas business, you're either going to have to know to sell against it or you're going to have to know how to sell it. So it's in your best interest to actually learn it because it's coming. It's coming very, very heavy. Um, and then we've got a couple of Christmas light trainings as well coming up um, down in our Sarasota location. Um, and then another one up in Raleigh. And those are our boot camps. So those are intended for people that are brand new, want to get in the industry and don't even know where to begin. So basic products, how to sell it. Some of the stuff we've talked about today, we go in depth on. And uh, there again, set these businesses up for success. And then we'll have a couple more of those. That's just over the next seven weeks. I know we'll have a couple other boot camps and a couple other things as we approach the season as well. So going to be a bit wild. Um, my wife's not, my wife, my wife isn't really sure where I'm going to be on any particular day, but we'll work through that and, and, and have a lot of fun and, and help, help set people up for success. Oh, exactly. That's what I was going to say. You're going to um, impact a lot of lives, set a lot of people up for success and light up a lot of lives. Um, That's right. In the coming week. So we'll make sure and post and share um, all, all that you have going on with our viewers. But thanks so much for joining us, Jimmy. Thank you for everything you do to help everybody out. Appreciate it. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Unleash Your Unique Genius. We'll be back next Wednesday.